This is how I have my Warble 2 configured. You go to the Warble configuration tool, which is at this website here, and then you go to the custom fingering, and you're going to paste your fingering in here, which is just a list of the 256 different combinations, because there's eight different holes. So I used a spreadsheet. And I set mine up to be a sort of modified EVI fingering. I used Matt Trom's fingering from um, like the Akai Iwi. But then I modified it somewhat because there isn't the same number of finger positions. So you don't have as much to be able to use. But what I also did was I used my left hand at the far end of the whistle and I covered three holes with the left hand. And the reason why I did that was because that positions your left thumb between the two buttons that you can program. So these, if you look at the way this works, if, I, if, you, make, if you put your left hand on these three buttons, then there is two buttons. Well, there's three buttons on the back. One of them is used to turn it on, and you can set it up for one other function. But... I have buttons one and two set to octave shift up and octave shift down, and they're both on momentary here. So allows me to get three different octaves. So with nothing pushed, and then with one pushed up and one pushed down. They're too far apart to push them both at the same time, unfortunately. But I want to do that with my left hand, since that's the way I'm used to doing octave control with the EVI. And then I have, so I'm using my left hand on these three buttons, and then I'm using the regular valves on these three buttons. So this one is the, this one here ends up being the fourth valve. This is your index finger of your left hand. And then this finger here ends up being like the extra key on um, the new EVI. This one over here, when I raise it, to, it goes up a half step like the Akai does with that finger, if you raise it up a half step. And then if I raise this one, this is different. It also raises up and it's cumulative, unlike as on the Akai. So this one here, I have it raising up by a whole step. So I have a half step here and a whole step here. And then I have this one, if I put my finger down on this one like that, then I have that one going up two full steps. So major third. So that allows me to have three and a half octaves with the EVI fingering system. Uh, that's pretty close to the way it is on the on the um, Akai Iwi. And the way I did that was with the spreadsheet. I set it up here. I've put a value when when you have no holes covered, 
you have to figure out what the value is supposed to be in, in note 75 because I want this to be in the concert pitch. So I have that set to 75 and then I have the thumb. I'll talk about the thumb in a minute, but I have the right one, two, three. Those are the main valves. And then this one is your, your pinky and then left the left three fingers. And what I did here was for each of these combinations, instead of trying to figure it out and just manually putting these all in, I've got it a formula worked out here so I can just put the formulas in. So I have a B3, which represents the thumb, uh, which I have set to go down by a whole step, two semitones. And then you see this one is set to G3, which is this one here, is set to five, go down by five semitones. And then you can go through the things, but this ends up being the, the fingering. See these fingers here, you have two, and then I have one, and I have three. Those are the main valves. So that's these R1, R2, and R3. So you can see they go correspond to all that. Anyway, so you do, you have that formula, and then, you know, you control D down to the last line here. It's all 256 things here. Go like this and select it. You copy it like that. Then you go over to the thing here and paste it in here like that. You select where it's going to go like that. I'm not going to do it. And then you, and then you go back and then you save this instrument and I've got instrument two as my default. Um, you save it, hit this button and it sends it to the instrument. So I have my fingering set up. I set it to slide and vibrato. This is really confusing for what I, my purpose is what I want to do. I think maybe it's more geared towards like tin whistles and stuff, uh, getting it to work right. But I have it set this way and I use the thumb hole uh, of the, well, in my case, it's my right hand, but it would be the left hand. I'm using that one to do pitch bend. And it's hard to show on here because it's, it only sends it when you're blowing. You can get it to do pitch bend there if you partially cover the hole. Unfortunately, that thumb position is kind of awkward for the way I like it. It's kind of, it's sort of above your pinky finger in this fingering the way I have it. And, and that's kind of weird, but it does work. And here is the position of the thumb up here. So you can select this one. So it's supposed to be just working with just this, but it still does some amount of slide with the other one. So anyway, there's some advanced settings in here. You can set up and go through that and figure out how to do it. This is where you make sure that the notes that are sent are legato. That's got to be turned on if you want it to play correctly, in my opinion. Um, also, I have my note transition filter here set to 13 milliseconds. It's probably longer than I need, but the problem is that those two octave switches I have set up aren't included in the in the transient filter, unfortunately. So it's really hard to change octaves without glitching. Um, I'm going to get in and change the code, I think. This is open source code. I've downloaded it um, from the repo online, which is really great. But um, I haven't had a chance to go in there and change it yet. But for my purposes, those two buttons, using them as octave switches, uh, I would like to include them in this transition filter, which would improve the playing, I think, considerably. Let's see. The note trigger on. This is important. This is the pressure value that you that I have set to turn on a note that makes sure a note starts and that has to correspond with in the pressure mapping um, when you have the mapping set up see I have this set to CCO2 for breath control and I have it set up to 1.4 here as a minimum and then the maximum here and you can set the curve differently if you want to and then the output range for the the value of the notes so that's those uh two got to be set up right and then if you want the velocity to be sent and not just a fixed velocity you could which you could set up to fix the velocity but i want to send it with the breath so you got to come in here and that's got to be in the same setting too so that's 1.4 there and i set these the same way so that it'll set send the velocity properly um and that works pretty well. Uh, it's not uh, perfect, 
uh, I think the, there could be some edits to the algorithm, I think, a little bit in that regard. But um, that gets you working the way you would expect it to if you're an EWI player. <laughs> um, and there's some other things you can set up here. But that's how I have that set up. Um, I don't really have the drone thing set up here anywhere. And I have this set to single register because I don't want to overblow and change registers with uh, overblowing. You can set it to thumb register, but I didn't want to use the thumb for that because it's in an awkward spot and I'm using the buttons instead to do to change um, to change octaves. So um, anyway, so this is the way it's set up. I have to set the breath. And instead of learning the breath, I, you just type it in here and then you can you can also look at this graph over time when you blow. Uh, let's see, advance. There's some settings in here for how it works for the um, overblow and things like that, but uh, you don't you don't really need that if you have it set if you don't have that set up that way. Let's see. Like I said, I had the octave shifts there. I have mine, the third button, once it's on, just a click on the button uh, blinks the light to show me the battery level. Because um, uh, I have it set here to not charge from USB hosts because I don't want it to keep, I don't want it to charge from my synthesizer I made that provides power out of that port. I'd rather it um, use the battery internal from here. And then I want to know how much battery I have left. So that's why I changed it to that one. You could change this so this click does something else. It also has a SIP setting, which I haven't taken advantage of yet. I'm going to probably end up using that for some switching something. I'm not sure. Um, and I have the Shake Vibrato on. Let's see. Where's the... Oh, it's in the IMU mapping. Yeah. So I have it shit. I have Shake Vibrato turned on. I have it set to up and down. You can make it go up or down first. And then how what percentage you want to send of that. Um, the sensitivity on it is pretty... It's, it doesn't have sort of like a dead zone or anything. So if you wiggle, like if you're moving your fingers and you wiggle it slightly, it will vibrato when you, you don't expect it to. So I may have to filter that somehow, make it change it a little bit differently in the code, I think, to make it um, less sensitive to just like little jerks. Um, I'd rather it be only a little bit slower vibrato. I mean, you, you still go pretty fast, but um, I, anyway, it... it it adds a little, you have to be careful with that. I have mine set for elevation. I have set to the foot pedal, CC4, and I have it set so that it's a, at this at minus 20 up to 10 it degrees so that it does something. I don't have anything on the synth that I was playing here working with that, but I have that set in my uh, VL70M um, to the growl, so. That I thought was a useful place to put it. Uh, let's see. There we go. So that's how I set it up.